Hi, yes, I'm your host, Mike Domish, and thrilled to be here with an incredible person from our cast today for a special one-on-one -on -one interview, and that is with Emmanuel Kelly. Thanks for joining us, Emmanuel. Thank you, Mike. It's good to uh, it's good to join you too. I got my big red headphones, and I'm set. I love it. And so, Emmanuel, you and I first met at the Genshai event in San Diego. I think almost, right. I think like four years ago now. It's been a while. It was, it's been a while, mate. Yeah. Absolutely. And Absolutely. It's an, it was an incredible experience. I want you to be able to share your story. I, I think it's always more powerful when the person can share their own background. Uh, and so if you could just give all the listeners, the viewers, a little background on your, your life history and the path and where you are today, that'd be awesome. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So a little bit about my background. So I was originally found uh, in Iraq. Um, uh, I was uh, found in a box in a park in Iraq um, where I was uh, then brought to an orphanage uh, ran by Mother Teresa nuns. Um, and I was raised there for about, well, I was raised there for about seven seven years or so. You know, while I was in Iraq, I, I met my, my brother, today now brother, um, who essentially kind of became like my minder in in the orphanage. But what was incredible about both my brother and I that is, was that we were both the only kind of mentally abled ones in the orphanage, which meant we had to take care of the kids in the orphanage. You know, he had to change diapers. We were, you know, feeding them and things like that. We, In some ways we were like, especially him, he was acting like a 30 year old when he was only seven or eight years old, you know? So it was one of those things, but at the same time, you know, we found ways to kind of, I don't know, create a, a life for ourselves over there. And, you know, at the end of the day, to us, what we experienced in the orphanage was, was normal, you know, it was our normal. Um, but you know, we, we heard lots of noises and saw some pretty crazy things um, that was, you know, that was very sad and, 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 and hurtful and, and all that sort of stuff and scary most of all. But at the same time, like I said, it was our normal. We didn't know any difference. Um, and then in early 2000, well, Moira Kelly, who's my now mother, she discovered both my brother and I, uh, when she was in Albania, believe it or not. Uh, and a nun had come up to her and you know, she has a saying, never trust a nun. They've always got ulterior motives, good motives, but ulterior. Um, but, uh, I've never but, heard that one before, <laughs> but, but, um, but she, uh, yeah, she has that saying and this nun comes up to her and she says, Moira, you know, I've got these two boys and they really need your help. And, you know, mum's like, oh, you know, I, I, I don't know, sister. And, and, you know, it depends where they are, you know. And at that time, mum had like 12 kids or eight kids and she was taking them to New York um, for, for different surgeries and things like that. And the nun says. And she oh, was located Moira. in Australia, correct? At the time, she was actually based in uh, in Albania. Oh, okay, so she was based Australia. in Albania. Okay, gotcha. But she's from Australia. Okay. She's, uh, her parents are Irish. She's she's Australian, um, and her dad's a crazy Irishman. But no, she's Australian. But she was based in Albania at the time. And this nun said, you know, there's these two boys. Anyway, to cut a long story short, she said, look, sister, I'm not sure if I can get there, but I'll do my best. And uh and she ended up there, you know, she, when she was on that plane, she, she realized she had a bit of an epiphany and a, and a realization who is she in her head. She felt who is she to kind of decide whether someone should live and, and have an opportunity to be helped or not. And so she made the big decision when she brought the kids back from New York to Albania. Um, she was planning to head home to Australia, but then she actually got on a plane and did a detour and, and came to Jordan. Uh, it took her about two weeks to get get a visa, and when she got that visa, she was in a she was in a taxi heading heading over to the orphanage. And I remember when she arrived, you know, it was like looking at an angel, to be honest, because she. Uh, you know, she, she, she not only looked it, but, you know, there was this, this feeling about it. And uh, at the same time, I also realized, I started thinking, how the heck did this white woman get into this country? And I mean, she was white. So I think, <laughs> my God. So, so it was pretty So crazy, how old are you but, at um, this point? How me. old were you in that? I was, I was probably about four or five. Okay, so four um, or five, she, she adopts you. Now, does she bring no, you? No, no, no. She, she meets us for the first time. Right. No, I know she meets you. Right. What age does she does she bring you back? She brings us. She brings. She brings both my brother and I back to Australia when he was about, or uh, over to Australia. Sorry, when he was about eight or nine, and I would have been maybe 
uh, six or seven. Okay, so there was a little bit of a process, a journey between that time. So there was there was about three years it took her two 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 to three years it took her. Just a great example of determination and and oh, it's incredible. love. Yeah. So now Absolutely. she now they bring you back to Australia, and yep. your life progresses, and you get on the uh, the show Australia's Got Talent. Yeah. Right. And so how, what, so did you just do a regular audition? Is that what happened or did somebody yeah, see you well, perform and say, Hey, we want to, you know, the producer saw you kind of thing. Well, no, funny enough that how it kind of all, all, all took place was mum. I was doing really, really bad at school. Like I was, I was just not a great student, put it that way. Um, but at the same time I was okay, you know, at some things, but I was a bad student. I got bad, you know, bad, bad, bad grades. I think I got suspended at one stage. I was just a really, a real handful, cheeky little, little uh, rascal. But, and so mum kind of made this rule and, and she knew I wanted to do audition for X Factor and a really good friend of hers and a, and a friend of the family uh, was an associate producer on X Factor. Mm-hmm. And she approached mum and she says, look, Emmanuel, you know, Moira, you know, Emmanuel's a great singer. And at this stage, you know, our family's quite well known in Australia. So, you know, this woman's and, and done your a few interviews known, for mum Your family is like known that. because of Moira, right? Because of how because many children she's brought in. Right, exactly. Because of mum and, and what she's done and the amazing work she's done. And my brother and I had a documentary about us when we were little, um, you know, and it was, it was, it, it was featured on, on, on uh, on network TV and it you know it we we, we kind of mum mum's work was what established her notoriety in Australia right absolutely and so anyway this 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 woman who had you know probably worked on a couple of shows that mum's probably been on and things like that had approached her and said hey listen you know these boys Emmanuel you know I know he's always wanted to be a performer and a singer etc um, why don't we uh, why don't we get him to audition? And mum's like, oh, yeah, I don't know. He's been a pretty bad student, and all this sort of stuff. And 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 this woman's like, well, Moira, it's your choice and it's his choice. And she's like, all right, well, look, let's do it. Um, you know, I think it's a it's a really good idea. But then she, when she told me, she said, now, Emmanuel, I've got a big surprise for you. I go, what's that, mum? And she goes, but well, you have to promise that you'll do your absolute best at school. I said, absolutely, mum, I'll, I'll do it all. I'm going to be the best guy ever, you know, all this sort of stuff. And she goes, uh, and she says, all right, well, I'm going to let you audition for X Factor. I said, oh, my God, mum, that's awesome. You're like the best mum in the world. I love you so much. You know when a mum does something for you, you're like, yeah. You're the best mom in the world. Right. And they are. The, you know, she is the, one of the, you know, she to me, she is the best mom in the world. But I was also sucking up to the max because I'm like, oh, my God, she's letting me do it. And I've, like, you know, got an F in, in maths this, 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 this semester. And maths, I was horrible at. I'm telling you, I was, oof, <laughs> I was really bad at that stuff. But, um, but anyway, I auditioned for the show. And, you know, in her head, and I only learned this afterwards, in her head, she, uh, I, yeah, and I kind of only learned this afterwards. But in her head, she, she, um, she had this uh, th- this epiphany and this thought, and and she was telling all our family and friends that you know, I oh, will, I'll let him audition, and he'll, you know, he probably won't even get through the auditioning round. <laughs> right, right. But I'll let him audition, and then he'll have to do well in his grades because you know I can hold that against him. You know, I'm like, oh. And karma, right? Yeah. Karma hit her this time, not me. Yeah, yeah. She said the nuns. Me. She said but the nuns have ulterior motive. She had an ulterior motive. <laughs> she, she had, she had a big ulterior motive. And she's saying things like, uh, you know, he'll he'll do well, and all you know, and all that sort of stuff. And you know, the crowd will love him, and they'll give him a round of applause, and you know, he'll feel good about himself. But then, you know, the judges will just be like, "Sorry, Manuel, uh, you you uh, you." you you, you got to be leaving and, and then, you know, I can, he can focus back on school. But of course, when I auditioned, it was, it was mayhem, right? The, 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 the audience went crazy. The crowds went crazy. It was just still today. The memory for me is I keep thinking to myself, I felt like almost a supersonic version of me because, you know, I was on that stage. My adrenaline, adrenaline ran wild. I even forgot. I, 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 I even forgot the words before I hopped on stage. 
but somehow I found out to remember, found a way to remember the words and keep going with the song. It was just, it was another, it was another thing that happened on that stage. And then the audience, the, the, the intensity, the viciousness of that, or that crowd, but a, a good vicious, it wasn't like a horrible, Rrr. it was just this, this, wow, they were proud, they were inspired, they were motivated. And I realized from that moment on, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. Stand on a stage, inspire the heck out of people, motivate them, make them cry, make them smile. Most of all, as a 17-year-old, make all the girls go crazy for me because I'm single. And I'm like, hello. So so, so, so what year is that? What years? Because I accidentally said earlier, Australia's Got Talent, but it was X Factor. What year did X-Factor. you appear on X Factor? It was in 2000, and, at, at late 2000 and late 2011. 2011. Okay, so yeah. the next year or two is when I run into you at San Diego again, Shai. Uh, yep. you, you're starting yep. to come over to America. That was your, I think that was your first it major was, trip to it America, was about, right? It was about literally about two months after, uh, after X Factor – um, yeah, it was two, it was like three months after it was two, two, two and a half, three months after X Factor had aired on Australian television right. is when, uh, is when I came over to, um, to, uh, to LA or San yeah. Diego. You're right. You know? And we meet at this event. That's all about coming yeah. together and sharing and yeah. spirituality and positivity. And we all awesome. get to, yeah, it was incredible. We get to hang out. It was wonderful. Uh, and so, and then since then, now you've, you've started to make these connections. So you're on stage. Yeah. You're on stage about a month or two ago with uh, what I'm forgetting. I'm spacing out right now. The act was you're in a major the, concert. You're on stage the, and your mom the, gets your mom's in the, the audience. The act was you got to guess that, mate. Come on. Oh, I'm going to I'm going to mess it up because I loved the video and I watched it. I'm like, oh, this is so incredible. I can't believe I'm I'm just having a brain space right now. So that's all right. That's all right. I'll save you. How's that? Great. I'm here to save. I'm here to save. Yes. Um, no. So the act was. Uh, uh, the act was, the act was, no, nah, the act was Coldplay. There we I, I go, there the we go, grand, Coldplay, that's nah, right. I was, I was doing the whole grand final. The act was. Yes. All right, so the you're on was. stage with Coldplay. It's incredible. People can see this on YouTube. You're on, you're on with yeah. Coldplay. Uh, and, and now, I don't know if this happened before or after, but if I understand right, now you're doing something related to Bruno Mars and his labels. Is this correct? So about a year and a half ago, I was doing a charity um, event, and uh, and at that charity event, I performed and, and did my thing. And you know, I, I, when I perform, imagine people somehow and and incredibly, they get inspired and they they feel. I don't know what it is, but you know, to me, I don't think I'm that special. But people somehow connect to it. So. You know, I had the whole typical uh, connection and it was beautiful and it was powerful and humbling. Every time it happens, it's humbling when people sort of stand up and give their support. Um, and it just so happens that in that same room, uh, Philip Lawrence, who uh, was the uh, was was is Bruno Mars's business partner and it happens to be the guy who um, who launched Bruno Mars's career, essentially. Um, and you know, written every one of Bruno Mars, the songs that Bruno Mars has, he's written every one of them. Um, and so, uh, essentially, you know, we have this, this moment where, uh, where I sing a second song and that was all of me by John Legend. After the performance, he comes up and asks me, you know, Emmanuel, are you signed? Do you have a record label? I said, no, 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 I don't have anyone. You know, I'm not signed. And they go, well, don't sign with anyone. I said, why is that? And he goes, listen, I, um, I launched uh, and and I'm the head producer and and have been producing uh, pretty much 90% of, of of a major artist single. But on top of that, I've also produced singles and and songs um, and written songs for people like Justin Bieber and Sean Kingston and you know all these incredible artists and entertainers. Um, and he's written songs for you know everyone you can imagine from Lil Wayne to to Snoop Dogg, to whoever you, uh, to right. um, CeeLo, you know, he's written all these songs, right? And uh, and I'm like, oh, wow, that's fantastic. And he goes, but probably the most well-known act um, is an act which, you know, I, I, I don't want to say too much about, but let's put it this way. I am, you know, my contract with this act and the contract with, 
with him and, and all that sort of stuff, you know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm essentially going to be creating my own label. And I'm like, oh, that's fantastic. And that's really, really cool. But, you know, LA is full of people that kind of just talk and are full of people that, you know, say great things. And, you know, and in my head, he's like, you know, I've, 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 I'm starting up a good label and I've done this amazing stuff. And I'm like, so is the Pope. Like, the Pope's right. going to start up a label. So Did when, you know, when like, is he actually seriously. signed? How long before you actually sign so him? Well, I looked in the car. When I got in the car, I looked up his name. And I'm like, okay, who is this guy? You know? Right. And I looked it up and I'm like, oh, my God. Okay, this is this is something incredible. Right. He's Phil legit. Lawrence. Right. Yeah. I mean, he's like – I mean – he's like the Quincy Jones of the 21st century, you know, and, it, and it's, I'm thinking, my God, this is incredible. Um, and so I thought, my goodness. So the next morning, you know, that saying where you shouldn't act, you know, play hard, but don't, don't overplay hard. Right. I kind exactly. of over, I kind of overplayed hard. Um, because what I then did was the next day I messaged his wife and I said, Hey, you know, um, uh, it was awesome meeting you guys last night and you guys seem awesome and it, it, all that sort of stuff. Um, I'm just wondering, you know, when you get a chance this week, let's meet up and, you know, uh, and if my, if, if my schedule permits it, then hopefully we can make it happen this week. I had nothing on that week. I had right, absolutely right. zero on that week, but I acted like, you know, I was top notch, probably not a smart idea, but I did. And, um, and believe it or not, they sent me a message that, you know, literally about 30 seconds later saying, hey, Emmanuel, uh, we want you to come to uh, to our house today and we want you to meet the team and we want you to meet the family and all that sort of stuff. And I'm like, wow, that's amazing. Come for a couple of hours. So we went there. We were only supposed to be there from about 3.30 to about 5.30 and the kids were going to have dinner and all that sort of stuff. We stayed there till about 11.30 that night. We just kept talking. That's and awesome. Just connecting. And it was just, it was this, this feeling that, that you don't really get much with record labels and companies these days. There was this relationship build from him to me, from his family to mine. And they kind of became another family for me here in L.A. as well. You know, so it was one of those things and experiences where, you know, we became brothers and we had a relationship before suddenly it became all about business and let's sign and let's create music and things like that. So now it's like two good mates, two brothers just doing awesome stuff, creating music, and hopefully one day inspire millions and millions of teens and adults alike, but teens to love themselves and I be love themselves it. I and love be, it. The, be who they are. So you've here's your story. You, I mean, for anybody listening, you think about this. You started in Iraq as an orphan. You also had physical challenges that we have not discussed uh, that, that certainly – made the journey, I'm sure, presented challenges along the way at times. Uh, and so then you're in uh, Australia. Now you're flying yep. back and forth, L.A., Australia. Yep. How do you keep a place of mindfulness? So our show is all about mindfulness. How do you, question. How do you keep the grounding, the focus? How do you not let all this craziness outstress you? What, do you have a daily routine? You know what? It's very simple. If I got arrogant or cocky, my mum would beat me to death. I'm kidding. No, she wouldn't do that. No, 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 no. She would, um, no, my, if I did get to that point, my mum would knock it out of my system before I knew how to say hi or before I, I, I could even say, hey, mum, I'm home. Um, when you live in a house through your whole life where there's children that are 10 times worse than you, you enter a different world like LA and Hollywood you can't help but think, my God, how lucky I have it really when I was home, when I saw those kids. Because, you know, mum has a saying, wisdom doesn't necessarily come in suits, right? These kids taught me more about life than anyone and any adult could teach me. These kids went home. I got to stay in Australia. I got to, be, be, you know, go through study. I got to have a life. I, I got to have a, 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 a mum that truly adored me. And not to say that their, their parents don't adore them. But I had, I, I, I had one of the best lives I could possibly ask for. But to kind of answer your question in how do I get to inspire people to have that mindfulness and, hum, and humility when they don't get to have the life that I did. And all I can say to them is remember every time that, time, you know, I don't know if I can say this, but times get shit, right? You can say that. You're good. I apologize. You're good. But You're good. When, when, sure. when, when, 
sometimes sometimes you just there's no other word but times just get shit um all i can say is remember that there's someone always worse off and it may help you know people hire therapists and do things like that you know what? it may help just go into your local soup kitchen and just seeing what the real world is like and if you are already there because that's your life then all i can say is things can't get any worse they can only get better but the only person that can make it better is you start believing in yourself start loving yourself most of all i had the luckiest life but up until six months ago i didn't even love myself i didn't know who i i was and so my my drive is to stay like that and to stay humble, I guess, is to remember that I everyone's put on this earth for a reason. Whether you believe in God, Muhammad, um, Allah, you believe in Buddha, you believe in, you know, whatever it is you believe in, you believe in science and, and a greater creation than us, whatever you believe in, right, we're all put on this earth for a reason and we're all put on this galaxy and on this universe for a reason. And each reason and each purpose is different. And some people may never find out their purpose because they have to create their own purpose. Some people may find out what their purpose is and only enhance that purpose. I believe that my purpose is very simple. And that is for me to essentially be, 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 I guess, some kind of beacon, I guess, for people to have hope and love themselves and and, and not be afraid of who they are. My dream is to become the first differently able pop success in order and to use that ability and that power and that establishment to essentially help people to love themselves and and encourage the world and give the world hope. And, uh, you know, I said in in a previous interview that, you know, I'm here. I'm Emmanuel Kelly. I'm not afraid of who I am anymore. And I'm ready to give people hope and to be the first differently able per success that this industry needs, I believe. Maybe it's not from me. Maybe it could be someone else. Maybe it's just me leading that way for someone else. But I'm here and I'm ready and I'm and I'm hopeful and I believe in myself and I'm encouraging others to also believe in themselves and to most of all love themselves. Yeah, I I love it. I absolutely love it. If someone wants to get a hold of you, Emmanuel, how do they do that? Uh, they can just jump on Facebook Emmanuel Kelly official dot com, uh, Emmanuel Kelly official on my Facebook page. Instagram's the same. Uh, Twitter is Emmanuel K Twitter with one T. Twitter wouldn't let me have two T's. Dang it. Um, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, no, jump on there. Other and and there's links to my website and things like that. But yeah, just just jump on those things and 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 you know, check it out. And most of all, check out the stuff that mum mum also does as well. She continues to do incredible work. So I want people to to check that out as well. Yes, she's an absolute miracle worker. Thank you for joining us. For everyone listening no worries, right Mike. now. Yeah, yeah, this has been Thanks, fantastic. Brother. And for anyone listening right now or watching, until next time, may you enjoy everyday mindfulness in your life. Mm-hmm.